Hi, everybody. The Minnesota Orchestra released in early February a fantastic new recording of Gustav Mahler's last symphony, the Symphony No. 10. It's a big piece, and there's a lot of mystery around it, 75 minutes in all, so how do you find your way into it? Especially if you're new to Mahler, new to this wonderful symphony. Full disclosure, this is my favorite Mahler symphony of all 10. So uh, Ospo and I are gonna talk a little bit about some parts of it that give you a handle on how to find your way into this big piece. The piece starts so quietly with this extended passage for the violas. It sets a mood right away that is powerful and stark and um, almost lonesome. But that's the way I feel when I listen to the, the violas sing this very kind of mournful song at the beginning. How do you approach the very beginning of this piece with the violas all on their own? It's, it's really, really powerful because it's so unusual and, and it's marked pianissimo for the violas. And, and I'm so happy that we got great pianissimos, very soft sound from the violas of the Minnesota Orchestra. It's difficult. It's difficult because you have to try to make as little as possible, but everything should be together and in intonation. But they really play it so well. And actually, it, it, it's not only once there. He starts the whole symphony with this kind of what? What? And even the question is not what, it's like what? It's like, it's like a whispering. And everything which happens between those violas is, is more the storytelling. This is, I think, his most autobiographical symphony of all 10 he wrote. And the other person who is attached to this symphony is his wife, Alma. Shortly before he began writing this symphony, he discovered that Alma was having an affair. And there's one moment in the first movement, this big first movement, that's 20, 25 minutes long, that I think is his discovery of the affair, where the orchestra, to your point, opens up in this huge, huge dissonant chord. Yeah. And there is nothing like that, I think, in all of music. Mm. Certainly not before, before Mahler. So he's writing in 1910, and he creates this massive, massive sound. Yeah. That's, I think, is his moment of awful horror at discovery of this. I can see Edvard Munch's yes. paint, the screen. Okay, I don't like this, but what can I do? Which is a, what a lot of 2020 has felt like, hasn't it? <laughs> I don't like this. We are, <laughs> we are in the middle of, of a scream, right? Yeah, exactly, a long yeah. one. <laughs> but that, then I, I think that also said that, that there is this kind of Anxiousness and, and, and all kind of all kind of like like the steam must come out. I can't yeah. take it. Then there are moments when when he goes to some sort of some sort of happier place and then it could start like oh nice oh nice. But very soon comes the the question oh is it really nice? <laughs> it's not only about mother. It's about you, it's about me. We all have those stories when things are getting sometimes better, but often not so well. And we have to go through those things. Big first movement, a very big last movement, the fifth movement. In between are three shorter movements. They're quite quick. The, the, the tempo is often quick there is kind of this play of shadow and light, shadow and light, it's always back. And sometimes it feels like a devil's dance. Sometimes it's sweet as an angel. Um, what's going on there? The typical thing for Mahler is also to use Lentlers, the Austrian, uh, Austrian uh, folk music, both of the sketches. They have those lovely moments. It's kind of a, a waltz, isn't it? Exactly. Like a country dance. <laughs> Yeah. 
and then it goes to this kind of or, or more darker place. And then we have this amazing intersection that leads into the fifth movement that is so powerful and stark. The symphony essentially stops and you hear this, the, the bass drum played, is it fortissimo in, in the score? Very loud. Yeah? Yes, I think this forzando, yeah, it is, it, it stops yeah. everything. everything. And, 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 and it's also orchestrated so that the first bass drum comes in the end of the fourth movement. That's right. yeah. So there is a beautiful, nice, dida, dida. That, that the timpani is uh, solo, double bass is playing, and then it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. what? Yeah. And then starts the 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 four, four, uh, the fifth movement again, <coughs> yeah. what? And and then this beautiful, but but I, I think that beautiful uh, uh, the tuba. Melody Steve played it so beautifully, but but it's like it's like a big bear, yeah. like coming like something loud, so so low register. But what that leads to is one of the most incredible moments I think in all of Mahler's music is that gorgeous flute solo. It's that really is where the whole piece, all this darkness, most of this darkness turns and you get this moment of utter serenity. It is, it is a place, I think every time I have conducted this, it, it's a place where the, the tears are, are coming. Adam Kunzel plays it extremely beautiful. And, and what makes it beautiful for me is that it's not this kind of brilliant flute solo when you stand up and you check that your hair is good <laughs> and then you start to make like a Broadway. No, it's, it's again, it's very much connected to the viola star yeah. of the first one. Yeah. It's just like, like, yeah, I might have, I, I'm, I'm happy I might have tears, but at the same time, I don't want to show it yeah. because if I show it too much, then, then I'm sure that someone is going to, going to kick me and, 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 and take it away. And the whole piece ends the last five or six, maybe seven or eight minutes, quite with this beautiful this feeling of serenity. And the last two bars in the score, Mahler writes, uh, to live for you, to die for you. And he uses his pet name for his wife, Almshi. And he writes it right in the score there. So this autobiographical symphony, this man telling his story, pouring his heart out to his wife, and that's the last music we have uh, from in the symphony form. So congratulations to you and the orchestra, and thank you for uh, thank you for taking us through this uh, journey of Mahler ten. Thank you so much, and thank you. My thanks to the orchestra too. I I would like to say that if I haven't done anything else to, during these years than this one symphony, one, one recording of this symphony, it it it, it, it it's remarkable. It's so so well played, so so full of emotions. So, so I'm really happy and proud of, of, of the orchestra.